pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As wonderful singing. Amen. We looked in chapter number 9, and chapter 9 was about giving. And you remember in verse number 12, that's 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, we talked about experiment. What's an experiment? What, there is something you can put in a Coca-Cola and make it go pshh. Mentos, okay. And the next thing you know, it's going pshh. So that's an experiment, right? Okay, the guy that invented the light bulb, we talked about him. It took him how many times, Brother Mike? Okay, that's a bad illustration. But yeah, 10,000 times, amen, to uh, create the light bulb. Amen. And so the experiment, some of you are baby Christians. You, don't, you have not fought the battles. You don't know what it's like to be in church. Um, it, it's not for wimps. Okay? It's real simple. If you're a wimpy person, this church is not for you. I wish I could make it less plain than that, but I, you know, and give you some sophisticated word for wimp, amen. But uh, that's basically what it comes down to. Christianity is in in uh, there are wimpy churches, yes, sir. Right. okay. And if that's what you want, then you can have that. But an experiment. Uh, this church in chapter nine is learning to give but give beyond their measure where it hurts to give, okay? And um, God does sometimes expects us to give of our time, our talent, our treasure beyond what we can do. And sometimes he wants to see that desire to see how, how, how willing are you to give? Does that make sense? Amen? And sometimes it can it can hurt. I mean, I, I you know I'm up here and I told my wife take overdrive. I was sick yesterday. I think I don't know if I got overheated. Uh, I, I don't know if it's my medication. They changed my medication, but I, I've been sick. When I take my medication at night during the day, it, there's no problem. But you know, uh, you keep going. Amen. You just keep going, whether you feel good or whether you don't feel good. Amen. Because, you know, the older you get, uh, the more you're not going to feel good. And, and, and so there's an experiment. There was an experiment for two parties. One to give. The other to receive. Well, let me say this. There's a time not to receive. No, I don't want it. You say, Why? Because it's coming from somebody that will make you look like a bad testimony. And you say, who will tell me this? Uh, God will. God will speak to your soul and say, do not take it. Just because it's offered to you does not mean you take it. Amen. Just because the door is open doesn't mean you step through. Again, it's a learning process. Uh, you know, not every door is meant for you to go through. And there may be lots of doors. Uh, Brother Jack was always scared of me uh, when I first started uh, doing revivals. Uh, he thought I would get a big head at, at being a young preacher at the time. And, and he told me, he said, you know, I just don't think you're ready. You know, that, that'll really pop your bubble when you're a young preacher, a amen. And, you know, I, I, for the old man to say, I don't think you're ready. And you know what? He was probably, he, he was right, amen. I wasn't ready. And I did not need the notoriety uh, or the bookings because it would have gave me a swollen head. And I didn't need that. Uh, I, you know, I didn't want, I didn't need to, to feel that uh, I could do it on my own. So, the, you know, the old man was right. And, and so there's a, was an experiment. Uh, there's always going to be an experiment. When's an experiment? First time you do it. 
It's an experiment. Amen. Amen. Any of you ever experimented with being in love and it didn't work out? Amen. There was a little girl, and I was in the fifth grade, amen, and, and I was in love with this little girl, amen. She was in the fifth grade. She was my first love, amen, but it never worked, amen. It just never worked, and I mean, I worked hard at it, too. I mean, you know, I really wanted this fifth grade you know, young lady, but it never worked, amen. So that experiment failed, amen. And there are some that's going to work, some that are not. And in your Christianity, you're going to find that out as well. There are some things that you can do, and there are some things you cannot do. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. So we're seeing the experiment of giving. But there's other aspects to that as well. Let's continue. Now, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. He's beseeching. He's talking, to, again, to the Corinthian church with meekness. He's saying with gentleness, who in present and base among you. He's talking to the Corinthian church. He says, you know, when I'm with you, you treat me like I'm a nobody. You treat me like I'm base, like I'm just like you. But he's an apostle. He's the one that started the church. He was the missionary of the church. We could say he was the pastor of the church. He said, but you're treating me just like, you know, I'm, I'm nobody. Amen. And, and he said, so if I'm among you, you think I'm, I'm just like a regular guy. And, and in some instances, you, know, that, you know, that's fine. The pastor, you know, uh, my job is not to befriend you. My job is to preach to you. You can hate my guts. I don't mind. Okay? I don't mind if you hate me. That's okay. As long as you're getting something from God, that's perfectly fine with me. Does that make sense? Amen? I'm not here to make uh, for everybody to become my friend. Uh, that, that's not my job. My job is to pastor. My job is to preach. And, and if you like me, praise God. And if you don't like me, that's okay too. Yeah, amen. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Uh, you know, not everybody likes me. So uh, he said, but being absent, I'm bold towards you. He said, when I'm writing this letter, I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, some people can't handle the truth. Oh, they just can't handle it. And, and so you got to write them a letter. Because if you tell them out loud, they'll go, well, I just can't believe that. You know what they'll do? They won't even read the letter. Right. I, I, I'm just telling you, there's some folks, they, they won't even read the letter. You know why? They, they don't want to know the truth. You know, that, that's a personality that I think all of us have, is that we really don't want to know the truth about ourselves. Amen. Hey. It's just part of us. Say amen. I mean, we just, you know, we have flaws, and we, want, we don't want anybody to expose the flaws. But Paul says, Monacare, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you in this letter. Even if, you don't, even if you treat me like an equal, which you shouldn't, but because you're treating me as an equal, he says, I'm going to be bold in this letter. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I, I am present with that confidence. Wherefore, I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. In other words, you're treating, uh, he, Paul's saying, you're treating me just like I'm a regular person. And I'm not a regular person, I'm your pastor. Amen. Amen. So, you know, uh, there are certain ways that you can talk to somebody. Did you know that you could talk about somebody and be talking to someone else, but you're talking about that person and they're overhearing every word? So what are you doing? You're back talking. Right. Amen. Amen. And so that person knows you're back talking because they hear your name. Amen. So if I say, 
Michael, everybody knows I'm talking about Michael, right? Somebody say amen right there, amen. amen. So, you know, or, so, you know, he says there's some of you uh, that go around thinking you're as equal as I am. Why? Well, you know, I preach a little bit. You know, I preach and I teach and I read the Bible and, and uh, I, I tithe and I do everything that you do. Okay. But Paul's the apostle. So you're not just like Paul. And this church is having a problem with this. And so Paul's saying, you think I'm, I'm doing everything I do in the flesh and then you can treat me just like anybody else. You need to treat me with some respect. Amen. Don't be back talking me. Amen. Because when you're back talking me, uh, he, 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 you know, he, he says, I'm going to back talk to you too. You're not going to like it. I mean, you don't want that. Uh, Michael, I'm going to use you again. If I ever have a problem with your wife, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you. You know why? You're the husband. Is that correct? And then in private, you're supposed to talk to your wife. Not where everybody can hear you. Does that make sense? You don't want to belittle your wife. You want to do it in private. Amen. Children's Amen. That's good advice. I know sometimes they're pain. But you know what you do? You bring them in private. There's a time you you know. I mean, you know, I you know, I kid Gigi and I kid these these children. They know I love them. But, but there's times that I, I, can't, I can't be taught. There, there's some things that, that if I have to say something, I'm going to bring them in private. I'm going to talk to them in private. Amen. Because nobody needs to know. Amen. Nobody. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. We have a testimony as a church, and we don't need the world to hear we have problems at Bible Baptist Church. Amen. Now, if you ain't figured out we got problems... Go to any church. They all got problems. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen right there. A amen. They ain't figured it out by now. You know, they, 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 their elevator don't go up all the way. Amen. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The difference is there's certain wars that we fight. Where do you find Moses in the fight? Where do you find Moses when they're fighting? <laughs> no, no, no. Where do you find Moses when they're fighting? He's in the back. He's leading the soldiers. Now David, he wanted to be in the fight, but he got to the point where he was getting old, and his men even told him, uh-uh. Hey, listen, they kill one of us, they just kill one of us. They kill you, the light of Israel's gone out. No more fighting for you. You sit in the back. Right. Why? Because a general, there's certain duties that a general does not do. He has others to take care of that matter. Does that make sense? And so when the warfare comes... Guess what I do? I lead. Right. Amen. Amen. You, you're, if I have to drive the van, amen, that's bad leadership. If I have to clean the floors, that's bad leadership. Should I, should I be the one that, am I that good that I shouldn't? No. It's not that I'm better than whoever does these things. It's just that, as the general or as the pastor, my job is to lead. Amen. Does that make sense? Joshua's job is to go out and fight. He's to take the men out there and fight. My job is to sit over here. Every once in a while, I got to have a couple of guys hold my hands up because I'm too old and too tired. Hey, man, the only way we're going to win is somebody holding up my hands. 
So a pastor needs help. Amen. Warfare. What kind of warfare? Spiritual warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are they? What is our warfare? We have a sword. We have a helmet. We have a shield. You go through over there, list the whole thing of the armor of God. And what we're supposed to be able to do is to pull down of strongholds. And whose lives? Your life? Other lives? In the church? In your family? There are strongholds. Your job as being spiritual is to put on your armor and fight. Pull down the strongholds in your family. If you're in the ministry, in your ministry. You got kids in your children. Your job is to pull down the strongholds. It is a spiritual warfare. You are at war. Those beautiful children that you have will one day say, Why? 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 I, I know, I see some of these kids. Hey, man, what do I got to do there? What are you going to do that? Because I told you that's why. Amen. Uh, praise God. Learn that one. Amen. You got to pull them down. You got to pull them down. Stronghold. Now let's look at the next part. Casting down imaginations. Where are the imaginations at? Did you know that your mind can go cuckoo? Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? <laughs> you'll think, amen, you know, you'll think all kinds of stuff. Right. You know, they're out to get me. There's black helicopters following me. I mean, I, I, you, you'll have all kinds of stuff going through your mind. I, I, amen. My phone's tapped, I can tell already, amen. See, I told you you were cuckoo. Amen. Uh, just a little bit, all right? No. The casting down imaginations. What type of imagination? The church is against me. The pastor is against me. My, wife, my mates are against me. My children are against me. My boss is against me. Everybody's against me. Right. Everybody hates me. Everybody looks at me funny. I can tell. I, I, I can tell. I'm smart. I can tell. You know what you got to do with some of these imaginations? You're going to have to cast them down. Remember, you're in a warfare. What are you going to do? Cast them down. It is a violent war. Things that come in your mind that shouldn't be in your mind must be pulled down. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought, every thought, every thought, Everything that's going through your mind, amen, what are you supposed to do? It's supposed to bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Is this helping my church? Is this hurting my church? 
Is this helping my marriage? Is this hurting my marriage? Is this helping my testimony? Is this hurting my testimony? Amen. Amen. You have got to get to the point where you're, with things that are going through your mind, whether it's true or not, imaginations, you have to capture them. And bring them into obedience. You will no longer bother me. Reach up in the air and grab you that dirty bird that keeps messing with you. Do, are you listening to me? Everybody get your hand up, amen? Get the dirty bird, grab it, and pull it down. Bring it into captivity. If you have to kill it. String it up, do whatever you got to, but you bring it into captivity. That means throw it in prison, lock up the gate, you're not bothering me no more. There are a lot of things that go through your mind that are hurting you. And you're allowing thoughts to hurt you. If you're a man... Get to a good age. And a 25-year-old babe walks by, and she's, you know, like one of them Pepsi commercials. Yeah. Oh, Pepsi, you know, or whatever the commercial is, you know. You got to learn to cast that imagination and that thought I want to be with this babe. No. Get it, bring it down, throw it in the vault, lock it up. Amen. Amen. Ladies, do the opposite. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. You'll, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. You say, why? Because you got to put it into captivity. It's got to go into the prison. It's got to go into the dungeon. These things are bothering you. Listen, if you're married, you should not be thinking about another person. Amen. That's just the way it is. You're stuck with them. Amen. Till death do us part. So get some poison. I don't know. Amen. Too late. You married him. You got drunk. You want to get murdered? Yeah, I'll get murdered. Well, you get murdered. Amen. You want to get murdered? You don't get murdered. Hallelujah. Amen. So, no more. Amen. That little dirty bird has to go into. Captivity. Every thought that is bad. My wife doesn't understand me. Well, she doesn't understand you either. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. You're all crazy. Amen. I can tell you that right now. A a amen. My wife don't care about me. Take that thought. Throw it in the prison. Lock it up. You got to do that over and over and over. You got to bring that imagination and catch that dirty bird. And finally you got that dirty bird. And you bring it down to captivity. And you lock it up. It's captive. That means it's locked up. Women. Number one thing, jealousy. Amen. Listen. If your husband wanted to, he will. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen, brother. 
If you're treating your husband right, why would he want to? If he's faithful to God, why would he want to? But if you're going to be a, give me a good word. Give me a good word. I need a good word, but you know what I'm talking about. But give me a good one, amen. A nag, amen. Let's start there. If all you're doing is nagging and pushing him out and not meeting the needs of your mate, male or female, yeah, that's good preacher, preacher. guess what happens? You're going to open that little vault and you're going to let that dirty bird just fly. You're supposed to bring it into captivity. Amen? Till death do us part. Amen? But I, I'm just telling you right now, it's not their fault if you let the dirty bird go. It's your fault. Whether it's a male or female. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. So what do we do? We cast down. What do we do? We got mighty warfares. We're pulling down strongholds. Casting imaginations. Putting them in captivity. They got to go to prison. They got to stay in prison. You don't keep them in prison. Guess what happens? You're going to wind up becoming the prisoner to the dirty bird. And the dirty bird now has you. And you're locked up. Yeah, I can see you one. And have it in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What does that mean? That means that you ought to have be ready for revenge. As soon as this dirty bird is messing with you, you want revenge. I want this sorry thing out of my life. And I want to put it into captivity and lock it up. Amen. Whether it's a bad thought about your mate. Amen. I told, I told, I told the teens, I said, listen, you know, you're eating your food and you just got married. Amen. I said, boys, what do you do? This is delicious. It doesn't matter if it's burnt or not. Amen. You just have a happy marriage. You go, this is delicious. Until she finally admits, this is horrible. Amen. Then you go, yeah, I agree. Amen. This is horrible. It's got a burger. Amen. But until then, you eat the sucker. Amen. And you have a happy marriage. You know, he leaves his dirty underwear. You don't tell him when he's upset. You tell him when, you know, he's calm and relaxed. Baby, baby, would you mind not leaving your dirty underwear, you know, by the bed? Would you mind? Or you can say, man, you live like a pig. Would you please pick that thing up? Which one you think is going to be more agreeable? Revenge. Revenge. You know what the devil wants to do? If you're married, he wants to put you up. What he wants to do if you're in church, he wants to get you out. If you're living for God, he wants to ruin your testimony. Amen. He'll use any dirty bird that he can. You have to capture them all. Here comes this sucker again. I thought I already locked him up once. Well, you may have to lock up another one. Because this one's 23, amen? Then here comes a 29-year-old. you got to lock that one and throw it into captivity. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Revenge. How dare this sucker come in my mind? Get ready to get, put it into captivity. To obedience. Why are we doing this? Because we want to be obedient to Christ. So he doesn't even want us thinking dirty. 
Do you look on things after the outward appearance? Uh Uh-oh. So here's Paul asking the question. Do you look on things on the outward appearance, on what it looks like? If any man...